So I got some parts to fix this issue I'm having, the fuel issue. So I got a Holly regulator to replace the one in my regulator and filter. And here's my filter to replace that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil and uh, change these plugs too. All right, so here's my fuel pressure regulator and filter mounted up here along the chassis in the back. <clears throat> so now I gotta take that regulator out and filter it. See if that fixes the issue. Okay, got the return line off. There's the regulator right there. All right, fuel pressure regulator is out. It looks pretty clean from what I can see. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace it and uh, get on that filter. And now that I can see it in the light, it does have a few things sitting on top of it in the screen compared to the clean new one. So this could more than likely just be cleaned and put back in because the screen does pop off and then uh, stick it back in there and be done with it. But it's good to have a spare on hand. Okay, I ended up having to take the whole assembly out. This is the uh, mounting plate that I made. I don't have an AN wrench that goes that big, so uh, I have to get one of those to keep in the car. So it did have some debris inside there in the filter. It's like a gas filter or a fuel filter. <laughs> new filter and O-ring. All right, new fuel regulators in. The old one, I'll clean that up. Just keep it as a spare for now. Okay, now you can see the rib nuts where I'm going to mount this regulator back. All right, she's back up there. Okay. Hmm. We still got a fuel issue. All right, so it's the next day, and, uh, no fuel pressure, or not enough. And uh, so now, the only thing left to change would be the fuel pump. So that's what I'm getting ready to do today. Change the fuel pump. Just have to have another fuel pump on here. This is one during the build. I don't know, I can't remember how, but I ended up with two of them. So I have the whole thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that other one out. I may have heated it up a little too much during our starting and stopping and starting and stopping and testing, um, getting that air fuel ratio right. And if that's the case, uh, I guess I burn it up, but I guess we probably, I don't know, we probably changed the settings probably 40 or 50 times and the fuel was about a half to a quarter of a tank. It sloshes so much that the gauge is kind of hard to really gauge exactly what's the amount of fuel in it. I do know that now it is completely full, which is going to Make it really fun pulling it out of there. It's a tight fit, but it's a nice, uh, nice little access hatch. I've labeled my lines return. So when I disconnect them, I shouldn't screw that up. Shouldn't screw that up. This is a Holly assembly in there too. All right, so uh, <clears throat> getting ready to uh, take these fuel lines out and stuff. Uh, if you're gonna do this, make sure you're not uh, smoking or anything like that. You know, cause uh, these fuel lines right here, uh, if you're smoking around those, it'll blow up, man. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm a professional, so I don't have to worry about it, but uh, you know, you shouldn't uh, do it. I'm obviously kidding. I haven't opened it up anything yet. That's why I'm going to enjoy the cigar before then.
All right, so I got the uh, fuel pump assembly all out. I'm just taking it apart right now. Um, these hose clamps that it came with, um, I'm gonna change those out with some steel wire ties and um, make it a little uh, less cumbersome pulling it in and out. Well, within an effort anyway, take off that much, at least that much space around it and make it a little uh, easier to get back in there without chewing up the wires and stuff. I did some damage to the wires, but happen to have a plug with the new one, so evidently that happens a lot. The fuel sock filter, it's darker. Uh, it's a little different than the one that came from Holly. But I'll give it a shot, see what's up. All right, got the new pump in the assembly. Cleaned the wires up a little bit. Those wires are a little too long, so I shortened them up. Got a new sock on there. Put some uh, metal wire ties to hold it up tight. And we're gonna put this thing on now and see what's up. This is the return line. Return line. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I got it running right. Uh, well, can't really say that. I got it uh, idling very well. Um, I ended up going to Holly or calling up Holly tech support and reset the wizard on um, the sniper system. Just basically had to go back in and reset everything. Uh, the number of cylinders, the cubic inch, et cetera, et cetera. And um, got all that reset again, put the idle in. And the idle took this time. It wasn't really taken before. It was, I'd set the idle at uh, 800 or 900, and then it just would always stay at 10 and 11. It was just always really high. So uh, the tech told me that I should have a leak somewhere through here, an air leak, because the oxygen sensor is over on the side. So he's saying that it's operating like it's got a leak because every once in a while, the IAC, um, uh, the air uh, ratio would go up to 35.6, which is pegging the uh, um, the oxygen sensor. So with the oxygen sensor reading that, at least when I step on the gas, he said that he thinks uh, that it was an air leak. So I dug around in here and I found a little bit of soot right in here uh, in between uh, where the pipe connects to the uh, header here. And the ball flange may have moved just enough to where it had an opening, just a tiny opening. And I felt a little bit, or I could uh, rubbed off a little bit of uh, soot there. So I'm thinking that's what that was. So I loosened it up. Basically was able to lift the pipe up a little bit, keeping it off the body, and plug that hole. Tightened it up real tight. Um, started it up. Same situation. The exact same situation. Like nothing changed at all. So... Um, I didn't bother calling the tech back. I uh, figure that uh, that oxygen sensor has went bad. I know that when they completely go bad one way is they just say 35.6 all the time. Um, but other people, I've went on YouTube, looked around, but other people have said that it was doing the same thing mine's doing. So I went ahead and ordered another one. So um, I'm waiting on an oxygen sensor. I got to wait till the 20th. It is uh, now the 12th. So uh, I'm grounded till the 20th. So I'm thinking... I might just go ahead and change these pipes out with my new um, gas and pipes. So I guess maybe I'll do that while I wait. So here's the Bosch uh, O2 sensor. This is what came with the Holly Sniper system. So here's the uh, 
the number here on it. I believe that's probably a Holly number. Uh, went to O'Reilly's. They don't carry it. Went to AutoZone. They don't have it, but they could buy it for me, or they could order it for me. And uh, they said, oh, we can have it on the 20th. Or we could have it on the 18th if you pay 15 bucks or something for shipping. And uh, I looked at where they were looking at it, and it was Amazon. So I ordered it from Amazon myself. They wanted 115 bucks for this, and I got it for $102. But I got to wait till the 20th no matter what. So it's all suited up, but mainly because it's it's been real rich, running rich. So I'm thinking maybe it was spitting a ton of gas through the pipe, running rich like crazy, and uh, just kind of screwed it up somehow. I don't know. I was told you can't really clean these. First thought was to spray brake clean on it, wipe it off. But Holly said as soon as you do that, it'll screw it up. So I'll just wait. And if I'm wrong and it's not the O2 sensor, well, I'll have another one on hand.